Hi everyone, Diablo 4 Season 2 is starting and with it comes a major rework in how resistances work in the game. And in this video I want to go over that and explain what are the best strategies to actually deal with that now. So if you have seen the patch notes then you have seen this part here where it talks about how resistances works. In short, previously resistances were multiplicative and now they are additive and they have a cap of 70%. So this is very similar to how many other ARPGs handle that, usually have a cap up around 70, 75, 80 or so percent, and you try to hit exactly that cap, and everything in the game is going to be balanced around having this cap. And this will be no different in Diablo 4. This means that you have to get 70% all resists for fire, cold, lightning, shadow, and poison, to actually have a working character in the late game. This is the intention of the devs and this is absolutely going to happen, I believe. Now there is a thing where you get a penalty for going to the higher world tiers, which is minus 50 auras. So in total, you actually need to have 120 to every single element. Now, part of that is relatively easy to solve because you get it by default from just varying gear, basically. The amulet is going to give you up to 24% auras and a ring, uh, each ring will give you 10% all res. So this basically makes up for this penalty that you get here already with the minus 50, and you need roughly 75% resist from other sources. Now, I've been fear crafting a lot of builds to try to figure out how to do this the best way possible, especially on the Rogue and the Barb. I've, doing, I've been doing a lot of fear crafting, but I've also been talking to the other Maxwell guys here. We've been updating a lot of our build guides to season two, as you can see here, uh, we have a lot of stuff and there is definitely quite a pattern that has emerged here, which is that, well, you don't really get around putting resistances on your gear. It's actually going to be relatively important to do it now and there are better and worse items also to put those in. Now, if you look at some of my default planners here that I made, let's just take my um, Twisting Blades build, for example, the way that I usually handle this on the Rogue is that you have these jewelry pieces, so you can put uh, gems in there to get a certain resistance, or you can get all resistance, uh, depending on which color gems you put in there. The thing is that the individual resistances are actually uh, more beneficial because they have like a higher total value. You can see this here, the rebalance values for royal gems are plus 30 to one resistance, and for uh, diamonds, that's only plus five all res, and there's five elements, so you get a total of 25. So diamonds are generally somewhat ineffective compared to like individual gems. However, you have the advantage that it's kind of like spread evenly. So for builds and for classes that can actually stack enough all resistance, it's a much easier way to do it. Instead of trying to roll all the gear with like, you know, one, two, three, four, five different resists, you can just like stack enough auras and get it there. Especially sorcerers. They have a lot of extra all resistances on their paragons, but outside of sorcerer, it's not really that easy. Maybe necromancers can do it because they can roll all resistance on the shield. They also have a decent amount of like other resistances in other places, I believe. But outside of that, and maybe druids that have ancestral fortitude, the passive that gives them 50% auras there's not really too much hope of just solving it so easily. So you kind of have to juggle your individual resistances. And this means that very likely in many cases, you're just going to overcap using some of those individual gems. But in the cases where you're not, it is more efficient to actually use individual resistance gems. Now, that being said, two resistance gems kind of give you a similar value that one item roll can give you. So you get 30% each from, let's say, two gems and you get up to 65% all uh, single res from one item. So this is here. So an ancestral item can roll up to 65. However, there's another problem and this is that there's a really large range in this uh, resistance roll. So for example, if you were making some default planners and you're trying to put uh, triple resistance boots, something like that here, for example, well, you see that there's a really large range, 34.4 to 29.8%. So the maximum is nearly twice as high as the minimum roll. So it's not really that easy to get a perfect roll or near perfect roll on multiple of those resistances. Boots like those are going for 
hundreds of millions next season, guaranteed, I believe. Because, well, boots are definitely one of those pieces where it's very efficient to stack resistances. So, in addition to the boots, usually I put some on the helm, for example. The thing is that you have very, very defensive, very powerful stats on the other pieces where you can roll resistances, which is just the armor pieces minus the gloves. So, you can have it on the boots, the pants, the chest and the helm. And, well, usually you want to have a chest looking like this, with armor, with damage reduction, and not really anything else if you can avoid it. Putting resistances on a chest is kind of inefficient in terms of how much defense you can get there versus other slots. And stacking some defense is definitely quite valuable, especially in a season where they add a lot of new unique armor items that you really want to put in your build. There's stuff like Tibalt's Will, there's stuff like the Godslayer Crown, there's like Scoundrel's Leathers on a Rogue. Uh, a bunch of new uniques I've put there and a lot of people really want to use them, I believe. So that makes it even harder to actually find the right slots to get all those resistances. And this remains a really good one here with the boot slot. I've been looking at some other default planners and other builds that people have been linking me. And they try to put in like, you know, two or three of those new unique items. And I can definitely say that this is not going to happen. Um, yeah, under most circumstances at least. So as I mentioned, for example, Sorks, they can still kind of handle it because they have a lot of Auras in the Paragons. But this is kind of the exception, in my opinion. And then you still have to really invest into those resistances to even get there. So going around those resistance rolls is going to be tough. And even if you, you know, try to distribute those resistances rolls to, you know, like helm and chest and, and pants, then you're also giving up a lot of other defensive stats. My standard solution looks like this with the triple res boots, the one res on the helm, and then one res covered from the gems here. And then there's kind of like a little joker piece basically with like one random ring that has a skull. So obviously this could be a diamond, this could be any other kind of like missing resistance. In my planners, I just reflected it that way that this is kind of like the joker piece here and you can use that to fix whatever you're missing. Also keep in mind that you get two random 10% single resistance rolls from your rings. So that is also helpful. So instead of those like rather higher values of uh, two individual resistance, it's going to be one and one all res roll now. So this is not really reflected in this planner. But as I mentioned, you know, looking for these kind of stat rolls here, that's going to that's gonna take a while to find something like this. So this is definitely still a quite optimistic scenario here until like very late game when you actually find those kind of items that have these high resistance rolls and they have some other stats that they really want. So it's definitely quite likely that you might have to shift this around, especially if you have unique boots. So here's another example of my Reign of Arrows build. There's Flicker Step in there, really nice item, but has basically no res. And in that case, you actually have to do something like this here. Like here, you have to put resistances on a chest piece like this, for example. And then we have basically the same scenario here with the triple res. So this is kind of how I solved this on my builds. And I think that uh, a lot of people might be really um, uh, underestimating how difficult it might be to actually solve resistances. Now, we don't know how difficult the game is going to be. Blizzard has said that they want the overall game difficulty to stay rather the same, especially for the better builds and make it easier for the previously worse builds with the changes they did in Season 2. So I wouldn't really expect that we get absolutely annihilated just because, you know, a resistance is not capped or something like that. But they did say that they expect you to be capped at around level 80. And being a level 80 with those kind of items does sound relatively optimistic to me because they have massively buffed the experience gains. You're going to be level 80 in no time compared to before. You're not going to have a lot of opportunities to find a lot of items that actually have good rolls. So I think just collecting items that actually have any kind of resistances is going to be really valuable early on. And then you're just trying to like min max it to the point where you, you know, just try to reduce the overlap of the resistances so that you don't overcap too much. And then eventually also just move resistances to more efficient slots. So you might have a chest that looks like this. You might have a helm that has like three resistances or so, but you really want those skill ranks. You really want those cooldown, for example. And then eventually you might go to a point where you have like a triple res boot or at least a double res pair of boots or something like that. And then you try to like even it out 
with the gems here. So it's definitely going to be quite interesting to see how this all shapes up. And you should not forget that there is the opportunity to stack some all resists or even some single resists from paragons in some cases. So just as an example here on the rogue board, uh, on the starting board, you actually have a bunch of resists here. A bunch of other classes also have that. Uh, for example, on the barb, that's not really the case, but uh, on other classes, you might be able to get all resists from just another paragon board. So if, for example, on my barb build, um, there was just like another paragon board that had a bunch of all res, and then just picked that up instead to kind of give the same value that would get you on my rogue builds. And so like this, you can kind of like shift stuff around depending on how it's going for you. And in general, it seems like Blizzard is trying to promote a bit more dynamic in making a character in, you know, the gearing process, in the, the thought process of, you know, how do you actually progress your character and what do you prioritize in a certain moment when you find a new item can you actually equip it? Can you shift something around? Do you want to swap your gems around and stuff like that? I think that going forward, it will be very noticeable that you actually have to think a lot more about your build. And especially if you want to be efficient with your stats and your stat distribution and just like making your build the most powerful it can be, you will have to think a lot more about your choices in the future. And they've also shown this with some other tweaks they have done in this season with, for example, making certain legendary nodes or certain key passive scale of certain stats. So you have to like you know, look out for certain stats on certain builds and not on others and these kind of things. And that actually has a pretty huge impact in how you gear up your character and how you build your, uh, your paragons and these kind of things. In any case, that's it for this video here. So this is all recorded pre-season two. So we'll see how it will actually shape up. Personally, I think it's actually kind of interesting, like a puzzle to solve and it is not really too complicated, but it just has like the right amount of like, you know, tweaking your build and trying to find the right spots for these kind of uh, resistance rolls, for example. So personally, that was actually quite fun for me as like a little theory crafting exercise. Let's see how this will actually go in practice with actually finding those items and collecting the right resistances, etc. And let's see how important it will be in the end. I hope that with this video, I could give you some insights in how this is going to go with resistances in season two. Don't underestimate them. I think they're going to be very valuable. So keep an eye out for those. This is really what I wanted to get across here. After that, I wish you good luck in season two. I'm going to be blasting. I'm going to be uploading a lot of stuff here. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.